Hey folks, I'm so glad you're here. Dr. Joe here. And what we're going to talk about today is eating too much, sugar addiction, and a lot of the health problems that you're having right now may be due to something uh, that you're eating. And a lot of people don't realize this. I know I have reactions, I, and this would kind of spurred this on, is the other day somebody wanted me to taste, taste this coffee. It was an organic coffee. It's supposed to be really rich and whatever. And, and I don't like coffee, but I took a sip or two, and I said, I tasted good. I'm not a big coffee fan. And I thought that little bit of coffee is not going to trigger my headaches because I can't do caffeine. If I do caffeine, I get headaches. And then about an hour or two later, I started thinking, yeah, my neck's a little sore. That's kind of strange. I wonder why. And it became a full-blown headache. And so, so many times people come to our offices and they'll say, you know, my, my team of doctors, and I'll say, Dr. Joe, you know, I have gas, I have bloating, I'm fatigued. Fatigue's a big one, of course. Um, I have diarrhea, I have constipation, I have rapid heart rate, I have high blood pressure, I have diabetes. And the, the thing that's missing with a lot of the people that have come to us is they've never thought about what they're eating may be causing their healthcare problems. And this, I believe, is the next uh, phase, if you will, of healthcare. And what's going to happen, and I predict, and I'm, I'm just about always right, what's going to happen is two things are going to start being uh, made mainstream when it comes to health care. The first thing is structural issues. Now, I'm a chiropractor, and as a chiropractor, patients come to us with neck pain and back pain and shoulder pain. So if a bone is out of alignment, it pinches a nerve, and that can cause pain. So many times, if you listen to my show a couple of weeks ago, we did a, a show on opioid, the opioid crisis, is that we're treating the symptoms – but we're not getting to the cause. Now, I have no problem you treating symptoms. If I had a headache, I take an aspirin, I want to get rid of the pain. I want to get out of pain because pain itself causes other health problems. It causes, it causes inflammation. Um, the inflammation can cause brain fog, can cause all sorts of problems, uh, emotional issues. And so I want to get the pain under control as quickly as possible, which is why opioids have become so popular. But the problem is opioids become addictive because as soon as they start to wear off, you want more. Well, when it comes to pain, the number one cause of pain is pinched nerves. So what would be the most logical thing to do? Unpinch the nerve. And that's where chiropractors come in. I'm board certified in chiropractic. I'm board certified in orthopedics. I'm board certified in pain management, double board certified in nutrition, BS in nutrition, retired dietitian, award-winning author. This show that you're listening to now is heard coast to coast and around the world. And so we want to get to the cause of your healthcare problems. And that's going to be the next step, I believe, in healthcare is we're going to start looking at the physical problems that people have and address it physically and not chemically. So pinch nerves, unpinch them. Hospitals now are required to offer alternative health care aside from opioids to patients. And one of the alternatives, of course, would be chiropractic care. And so you're going to see that happen. The next thing that's going to happen, and this has to happen, is we have to start looking at what we're eating and is it related to my health care problems? And if you've ever been to the hospital, you know the horrible food that most hospitals serve, causing the problems to get worse. I see people in, in a cardiac unit, they're serving bacon. Come on, folks. I don't care what your philosophy is when it comes to food. Bacon is not something you should be feeding somebody who just had open heart surgery. I don't care who you are. I don't think you can argue that point. So we have to start looking at how food is affecting our health care if we're going to bring down health care costs or stabilize health care costs. It has to happen. So let's talk first about carbohydrates because this is the biggie. There's carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Those are the three biggies. Americans are being misled, especially by the health care industry and advertising. Hey, listen, if somebody owns a cereal company, what do they want you to do? They want you to buy cereal. I get that. That's the free market, and I'm okay with that. But you need to be educated so you don't make those mistakes. You don't have to fall into the advertising trap. So first and foremost, sugar and carbohydrates are highly addictive. Our per capita consumption of more than 100 pounds of refined sugar annually, that's 100 pounds per person, it, that kind of says what, what, what we're doing. And basic understanding of how our body processes sugar on a biomolecular level reinforces the validity of the addiction model. So what happens is you put sugar in your body. It stimulates the pleasure centers in your brain. The pleasure centers go off. You start releasing dopamine. You start getting high, and you want more. It's very simple. If I gave you sugar and I did a functional MRI on your brain, I would see parts of your brain light up, like the nucleus acubens, for example. That's just a big part of your brain, big word. If I gave you heroin or cocaine, the same part of your brain lights up. So the same pleasure centers are being stimulated. The problem is that I can get you to kick your habit. 
We can send you to rehab. We can get you off the drugs. I can't get you off food. You have to eat. And so if you have to eat and carbohydrates are obviously easily accessible, you're probably going to have a tendency to go back to that world. So uh, carboholism, if you want to call it that, or sugar addiction, is a direct cause of things like diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure, depression, a long list of medical, dental, and psychiatric problems come from eating too many carbohydrates. Here's your goal. I'll cut to the chase. I want you to consider eating about 40 to 50 grams of, of net carbohydrates a day. Now, what's a net carbohydrate? Take the number of carbohydrates you eat in a day. Add it up. It comes in grams. Then I want you to take all the fiber that you eat in a day. Add it up. Subtract the number, amount of fiber from the amount of carbohydrates you eat, and that's your net carbs. So if you ate something that had uh, 10 grams of carbs but 5 grams of fiber, that would be 5 net grams. Did you follow that? You want to shoot for 40 to 50 grams of carb, net carbs a day. If you can do that, your brain will start to reboot itself, and you're going to start to get over that addiction. Now, as long as the healthcare system keeps ignoring the fundamental biochemical causes of hypoglycemia, type 2 diabetes, eating disorders, obesity, you, the healthcare consumer, will continue to suffer needlessly. Now, as a chiropractor, you hear me say that all the time. Stop suffering needlessly. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, chances are chiropractic care can help you. Is it, does it help everyone? No, it doesn't. Are the chances pretty high it's going to help you? Yeah, they're pretty high it's going to help you. And so get to the cause of the problem. But until you recognize that what I'm eating affects my health, that pinched nerves can be causing my back pain, until you recognize that and address that, you will never, ever advance when it comes to health care. You can't because you got to get to the cause of the problems and not just treat the symptoms. Folks, going to have to go to a break. If you have a question, I'm going to open up the phone lines. The number is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. Uh, my website, we archive all our radio shows too, by the way, folks. So if you have a specific issue you want to listen to, go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. And you could listen to hundreds of hours of archive shows. I videotape my live lectures. Some people are visual learners. Uh, we put that on YouTube, a big YouTube following we have. Uh, you can get link that through my website as well, drjoesposito.com. But again, the phone lines are open. If you have a question, we're going to keep talking about this food addiction uh, and the phone lines are 844-44-DR-JOE. Hey, don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Tell your friends. Hey, folks, so glad that you're here. Uh, what we're talking about today, and I, I was going to talk about, like, party foods and how to survive party foods, uh, but I'm kind of taking a different direction here because I, I, I talk to people about healthcare every day. I, I, I practice. I've been practicing for 33 years now. And patients come in every single day with health care problems, and they got back pain and neck pain, and they got digestive problems. And when I sit down with them, and it's, it always amazes me because sometimes patients will say, well, Dr. Joe, I really just want chiropractic care. I don't really want to talk about nutrition. And I'll kind of nudge them a little bit, but I, I, I've, I've learned don't argue with patients. I'll say, well, I think it's kind of important that we do talk about what you're eating because it's going to affect how quickly you heal and how well you heal and, and the response you have. Most people get it. Some people don't. And I, like I said, if a patient just wants chiropractic care, I'm more than happy to give it to them. But our population suffering, the health care that we're suffering as, as, as a group, as a population, could have es essentially be wiped out in a very short period of time without a lot of drugs, without a lot of surgery, if people would just start addressing what they're doing to their own bodies, physically and chemically. And if we fix the physical and the chemical, the emotional then follows. Anybody ever been in chronic pain? Raise your hands. I bet a lot of you have. I have. And when you're in chronic pain, you're not in a good mood. And you try to muscle through it, and you try to act like it's fun, and you want to play with the kids, or you want to go out with your friends. And, but when you're in pain, it takes over every part of your life. Your romantic life, your family life, your church life, your work life, everything is affected when you're in pain. So you have to start to realize, what can I do, meaning you, what can you do to help get yourself well? and deal with your health care problems. So I want to talk about the top foods that people are the most sensitive to without even realizing it. So let me ask you some questions. Do you experience uh, frequent indigestion? Do you feel gassy or bloaty after meals? Migraine headaches or any type of headaches? Uh, nasal congestion, intermittent joint pain, periodic or seemingly random bursts of anxiety, insomnia, fatigue, mood swings. Does your mind feel foggy? Countless people, and I know this, I see patients every day, are plagued with these symptoms and an assortment of other symptoms as well. 
And many times they're misdiagnosed, they're misunderstood, they're brushed off as conventional uh, issues. Well, you're getting old. I love that one. I hear that a lot. Well, Dr. Joe, I went, to my, uh, I went to these other doctors and they said, well, they don't know what it is. It's probably that I'm just getting old. Well, yeah, things happen when we get old out. Some of our hair falls out, we get wrinkly, things start to droop. I'm not disregarding the fact that age has a, has, is, is a player in this, but you have control of so many of the things. And I'm going to talk about the, the most sensitive foods that are out there, and you don't realize that you're having reactions to them. And it took me years to realize I can't do, for example, caffeine. A lot of individuals, most common complaints are linked to a single problem, and that's food sensitivities. And then it kind of parlays into other things. So a food allergy is different than a food sensitivity. Let me talk about that. Food allergy is a reaction of the body's immune system to a food or a food ingredient that it recognizes as foreign. So you put something in your body, you're allergic to, let's say, wheat, okay? You put wheat in your body, the immune system looks at the protein in wheat, gluten and gliadin and glutenin, and it says, I don't know what that is, let's attack it. And so you produce certain uh, antibodies to attack these, these, these foreign op invaders, and it creates an allergic reaction. Food intolerance is an adverse reaction to the food, the food ingredient or the additive, something in the food, that does not involve the immune system. It usually involves the digestive system. So you may have exactly the same symptoms or similar symptoms. It really is semantics at this point. Is it an allergy or a food intolerance? Either way, we need to address it. Now, allergies can be more severe. Allergies can kill you. Food sensitivities probably won't. Uh, they can be similar, uh, skin reactions, respiratory problems, nervous system, things like headaches or depression, digestive problems, bloating or gas. There can be an issue there. While almost any food or any ingredient can trigger, uh, trigger a reaction in certain people, these are the big ones. The eight big ones are responsible for 90% of the food reactions. So I want you to listen to this list, and I'm going to put this show on my website, drjoesposito.com. You could listen to it anytime, no charge. And if you don't get the list now, you can um, uh, listen to it and get it again. And then I want you to start eliminating these foods, and we're going to do something called a rotation diet. So milk of no is number one, eggs, fish, shellfish, uh, soy, wheat and gluten, peanuts, and tree nuts, such as almonds and walnuts. So you can't avoid all these foods all the time in reality. Well, and although avoiding a particular food can be relatively simple, there's a lot of ways you can get exposed to it. It's not unusual that food particles can get, come in contact with you through the air. They can, there's things called cross-contamination. If you read the labels now, it says processed in a factory that produces wheat or processed in a factory that produces uh, fish or something like that. So not necessarily being mixed in with the food, but it's in the same environment. And some people are so sensitive. Like peanut aromas are known to induce life-threatening responses to people with peanut allergies. That's why peanuts are kind of banned from a lot of schools, and even on airplanes. I know it's, it's kind of weird. Sometimes I see peanuts, sometimes I don't. I think they're banned again, because I just flew the other day, and it was almonds that they were giving out, although almonds can give people headaches too. So cross-contamination is an issue. We've got to be careful with that. So derivatives from the foods we're sensitive to can be hidden in other products. You might not realize or not be aware that certain types of ingredients and food additives that can cause problems uh, are in certain foods, and you have to be on the lookout for them. Now, sometimes... The solution to a perplexing ailment is as simple as avoiding a single ingredient or just sing, not having it in your life. The problem is a lot of times these foods are mixed in. So wheat, for example, is mixed in a lot of things. Corn is mixed in with a lot of foods. So you want to try to avoid the foods and the ingredients that trigger uh, your, your reactions and learn how to substitute certain foods. Now, a reaction can occur up to four days later. That's where it becomes tricky. Many times patients go to the doctor's office and the doctor says, well, gosh, I don't know what caused your headache, Mrs. Johnson. So I don't know. Let's just give you some pills and let's see what happens. And you didn't realize that you were exposed to, like for me, caffeine. I get it right away, though. But it could be up to four days later. Most people have the reaction pretty quickly. So you got to start thinking about how do I make these substitutions? If you have a peanut allergy, maybe you can do almond butter. But maybe the almonds are causing a reaction. Maybe you can do cashew butter. So there's different things you can try to do. Sesame seed butter, sunflower seed butter. So you can try different things and see how you respond. And what you do is called a rotation diet. We're going to cover that a little bit later, uh, more detail about how to do a rotation diet. You need to listen to this. And then I'm going to tell you instantly how to find out if you're having a reaction to a food within a minute. It's a really neat little trick I'm going to teach you. Folks, got to go to break. If you have a healthcare question, give us a call. The number is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. 
my website, drjoeesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Now, the other thing that happens is you may be having reactions because your body doesn't have enough nutrients in it, and the body's kind of running on a skeleton crew. So you want to make sure that you're putting the right foods in your body. So I recommend that you try to make most of your diet consist of things like fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Again, if you have a nut reaction, you've got to be careful there. You want to do supplements. I recommend at least Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. I created these supplements because people were saying, well, Dr. Joe, I just don't get enough fruits and vegetables. So we take fruits and vegetables. We put them in a powder form. We add prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes. Uh, if you're not willing to do anything else to change your diet, at least Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They taste great, relatively inexpensive, about $2.50 a day uh, for both of them. That's on my website, drjoesposito.com, or you just Google Dr. Joe to get to the website. Also on Amazon. If you have an Amazon account, you could order them there too. But if you do nothing else, I'm begging you, please at least start there. And then once you start feeling better, you'll see some changes. Folks, got to go to break. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Break. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Glad you spent a little time with me today. And I, I, I kind of took the show in a different direction today. You know, I always put together my show notes and I plan things. I was going to talk about party foods and like surviving parties. And I started realizing something that we got to go a lot deeper than that. That's some basic stuff. But the health care of this country is, is in shambles. Uh, people are dying every day. I was up in New York not long ago visiting some friends, and I just I looked around, and, and I saw a lot of sick people, and people my age that really looked old and really looked uh, sick. And, of course, I've lost a few friends over the years, too. Um, they've died from cancer and other heart disease, things like this. And I started thinking, why, why is this? We live in a country of, of so much money, so much research is done in this country. We have amazing health care facilities. People come from all over the world to get treated here in the United States. And yet, I'm looking around and seeing people dying and sick all the time. And so I said, we got to come to a realization. We have to accept the fact, it's, it's the, uh, the, you know, the, the gorilla in the room. We have to accept the fact that what you eat has a direct impact on every aspect of your health, whether it's heart disease, diabetes, obesity, mental disorders, digestive issues, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, ADD, ADHD, you name it. What you're putting in your body, for good or bad, is going to affect your health. And until the healthcare system stops dancing around that fact, we're not going to make any progress. And we're pretty good here. We've got, you know, what's considered one of the better healthcare systems, but it's just got to be recognized. Second thing is we have to recognize that there's physical aspects of health that are not being addressed. And as a chiropractor for September 18th, 1895 was the first chiropractic adjustment. We've been fighting this battle forever. And finally, if you listen to my show, I guess it was maybe last week or the week before, we did a show on uh, opioid, the opioid crisis and how now hospitals are, they have to recommend something uh, alternative before they recommend opioids. And on that list are over-the-counter medications, non steroidal anti-inflammatories, chiropractic care, acupuncture, massage. So finally, it's being recognized and now insisted upon by the hospital association uh, that these things be, be introduced into the healthcare system. So yay for us. We fought a good battle since 1895, and we finally won. Now, this is step one. Hopefully, it's going to happen. Now, we have to get into the food aspects of it. Because if you've ever been in a hospital, you see what kind of junk they feed most people. It blows my mind. I've seen people in a hospital hospitalized for migraine headaches, and they're giving them something like a, a gelatin. Now, gelatin breaks down to free glutamic acid. Glutamic acid is a cytotoxin. Don't worry about the chemistry. It can cause headaches. So they're giving people a thing that might be causing headaches. To headache patients, they're feeding people bacon and eggs in the cardiac unit. Something's wrong. So I need to teach you, this is what we're going to do today. We're going to teach you the, the foods that you need to look out for and how to test yourself to see if you're having a reaction. By the way, I'm going to open up the phone lines. If you have a health care question, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. Uh, that number rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air, 844-44-DR-JOE. So the, number, the, the top eight foods that people have reactions to. Milk and dairy products, eggs, fish, and shellfish, soy, wheat, and gluten, which is wheat, barley, and rye, peanuts, and tree nuts. So sometimes people have reactions to eating it directly. Sometimes, sometimes people are so sensitive that if they even get exposed to it, 
It's in the air. That's why you don't serve peanuts on, on uh, airplanes anymore because certain people have such reactions to peanuts. And peanuts really aren't nuts, by the way. They're legumes. And they grow underground. And when they grow underground, they have a tendency to grow fungus on them. They're called mycotoxins. And a lot of people have reactions to the mycotoxins. So that's why you're having those, uh, those issues. So you just have to start realizing that food sensitivity can lead to things like arthritis and asthma and ADD and candida and celiac and dermatitis and depression, digestive disorders, fatigue. My doctors and I do a really good job trying to get our patients straightened out and well. I can't promise you results, but I can promise you that in our offices, we want to, we want to check the structure of your spine and all the bones in the body because any bone in the body can come out of place causing pain and dysfunction. We want to do a dietary workup on our patients. And sometimes it amazes me that patients will come in and they don't want me to do a nutritional workup with them. And I again, don't argue with patients, but it really blows my mind when I hear that. It's like, why wouldn't you want a nutritional workup? It's going to speed up the healing process. But I don't argue with patients. So we have to determine which foods trigger what symptoms. So how do we know there's a problem? Here's a little trick I want you to consider. We're going to do something called a rotation diet. So food allergies claim about 100 to 200 lives every year and send about 30,000 people to the emergency room. Uh, that's doubled in the past 15 years. About 4% of adults and 8% of children are affected by allergies. But a food sensitivity, I think we all have some food sensitivities. So if you eat certain foods, you might get mucus in your throat. Wheat and dairy, of course, being the big ones. Uh, diet sodas sometimes cause headaches with patients. Soy can cause gas and bloating with patients. So I think we're all having sensitivities. We may not be having a full-blown reaction or allergic reaction. But there are many theories why food allergies are now classified as a public health problem. Why are they getting worse? One of them is what's called the hygiene hypothesis, that we've become too clean. We've sanitized too many things in our lives, and our body is not used to this onslaught. When something comes along, the body isn't used to fighting. It becomes a problem. Now, I'm not saying don't stay clean. It's just one hypothesis, hypothesize. I'm not sure what the real word is. The other thing is genetically modified food. Genetically modified food changes the DNA. It changes the protein in these foods. And when you put a foreign protein into the body, that can trigger an allergic reaction. And the, the big foods that are genetically modified, corn, soy, uh, canola oil, it's made with uh, rapini or, or broccoli rabe, we called it, where I'm, where I'm from up north in New York. And many times that's genetically modified as well. But now we're having things like genetically modified salmon. Isn't that crazy? We've genetically modified living animals now. And it makes it bigger and grow faster. The problem is it is a slightly different protein. And some people are going to have reactions to that. So what I want you to do is do a rotation diet. And what that is is take the foods you think you might be having reactions to. And, of course, there's the, the list uh, of the most common ones. And that would be uh, milk, eggs, fish, fish and shellfish, soy, wheat, gluten, peanuts, and tree nuts. Take them out of your diet. Take them all out. You have to take them all out. And then what I want you to do, go about a week, go about two weeks, and then introduce one at a time. I'm going to try having dairy. And have dairy for a day or two. See if you have any reactions, joint pain, headaches, bloating, gas. And if you do, okay, we're having a reaction to dairy. Take it out of your diet. Now take the dairy out and add another one in. You rotate another food in. Let's try wheat, for example. Okay, we're going to try wheat. Ate the wheat, got a runny nose, got headaches, got bloated, got real irritated, agitated, got in a bad mood. Okay, now we're having a reaction to wheat. Then you put something else back in. We put tree nuts in. Well, I didn't have a reaction to that. Okay, that's safe. But a rotation diet, and you can look it up online if you want to, but a rotation diet is a good way to do it because even when we do skin testing, Yes, we can come up positive, but you may not be having a reaction to it, even though the test is positive, and vice versa. So try to rotation diet. You're going to be very happy. Folks, got to go to break. If you have a health care question, I'm going to open up the phone lines, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. And we archive radio shows. We videotape my live lectures. You can send me questions through the website. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Sign up for my newsletter. That's on, on the website as well. Absolutely no charge. And if you sign up for my newsletter, I'm going to send you a lecture that I did called So What Can I Eat? And it talks about foods that you can eat. Folks, got to go to a break. Don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We're going to be right back.
I am so glad that you're spending a little time with me today. I do appreciate it. Really good topic today. In fact, I got a few messages on Facebook already saying really good topic today. And uh, by the way, follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. We do a newsletter. We don't send out a lot of newsletters, and they're real short, real easy to read. I know most people have the ADD, you know. So it's on the website, drjoesposito.com, right on the homepage. Just send us your email address. I'm going to send you a link to a lecture that I did called So What Can I Eat? And it kind of talks about putting together a day in the life, breakfast, lunches, dinner, snacks, parties. You're going to go to a holiday party. You're going to go to a birthday party, whatever it is. It lays out how to do this because so many of you are suffering needlessly. And we want to get to the cause of your problem. And that's what my team of doctors and I do all day, every day. We do it online. We do it in person. We want to get to the cause. My books, the reason I write books is I want to give you a guide that you can say, okay, my first book tells you how to change your diet. Breakfast, lunches, dinner, snacks, recipes, that's in the first book. Second book called Prescription for Extreme Health is really a guideline for everything about what we talk about on the show. It's a condensed version of the thousands and thousands of hours of radio shows that I've done. And they're all available on my website, drjoesposito.com. So when it comes to foods and you having reactions to foods and it's causing your other health care problems, there doesn't seem to be a single accepted mode of diagnosing food allergies. A lot of people have different opinions as to what they should do. Now, some of the studies under review use self-reporters, which means I call up, hey, I ate dairy products, I had a runny nose. Others use the skin prick test, and still others use blood tests that measure something called immunoglobulin E, which is IgE, and that's an antibody produced during an allergic reaction. I eat dairy products, I do the IgE test, yes, I'm having a reaction to it. Very few studies use food challenges, which is a clinical test whereby the patient, that's you, is exposed to suspected foods and then monitored for allergic reactions. The problem is that takes a lot of time and money. Despite the fact that food challenges are far more accurate for diagnosing food allergies than any of the other tests. So that's why you can do these tests on your own. You don't have to have some big fancy university backing you. Now, due to lo- lack of diagnostic uh, uniform- uniformity, there's a hard, uh, yeah, I have a runny nose, what does that mean? It's unclear whether food allergy prevalence actually is increasing. I see it from my patients that it is. I'm seeing more and more people come in with weird things, a lot of gas, bloating, acid reflux, mood swings. Again, practice for 33 years. I can kind of put together years of experience and say, okay, gosh, this might be a pinched nerve causing your headaches. I can analyze the neck and the skull and see if there's any pinched nerves. And my doctors and I do this together. Other times I'll say, okay, well, when do you get your headaches? I get my headaches every Tuesday. Okay, what do you do on Monday nights? Well, Monday nights we go off for margaritas. Okay, well, let's cut out the margaritas for three weeks and let's see if you have headaches. And if you don't, great. If you do, you got a problem there. Artificial sweeteners, aspartame. Aspartame contains aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters. Aspartic acid, one of the components of aspartame, is an excitotoxin. It causes the brain cells to fire faster than they're supposed to and can actually cause the brain cells to die but can cause headaches. Number one side effect of aspartame is headaches. So if you have headaches, I want you to cut out all your artificial sweeteners. That's sodas and and cookies and cakes, and it's in yogurts, and it's in over 6,000 products. And see what happens. Now, the nice part about what we're teaching you today is let's assume I'm wrong. You do a rotation diet. You take all the bad foods out of your diet, introduce them one at a time, and see what happens. If I'm wrong, so what? I'm wrong didn't cost you anything. It's free. If I'm right, which I am, then you'll say, wow, that guy's brilliant. Well, perhaps, but you're the one that did the testing and you're the one that said this is the problem. I believe that all of us have some type of food reactions and we just don't realize it. So many patients come to us and say, you know, it's just an arbitrary thing. I get headaches every now and then. My joints hurt every now and then. I'm just getting old. It's the weather. No. What I have my patients do is write down everything they eat. We keep what's called a food, uh, food diary, diet diary. And I have them write down everything they eat, and, and I'll have them, if they have specific symptoms, right in the margin. Gosh, I had a headache today. And then we go back a day or two, and we look at their diet. And usually we can pick out something in there that triggered the headache that they never thought about. Well, you know, I didn't even think about it. I had chocolate cake because it was Bonnie's birthday, and I had the headache the next day. Well, you may have a reaction to caffeine or chocolate. <gasps> I never thought about that. Okay, let's try an experiment. No chocolate for two weeks, then have chocolate. And they'll do it, get a headache, and say, my gosh, you were right, Dr. Joe. 
So these are tests that you can do that are actually very definitive and they don't cost you anything. Now, other research has shown that people with a purported food allergy, allergy symptoms like rashes or stomach aches or whatever, tested positive for food allergy via the skin prick or the IgE blood test have less than 50% chance of having the food allergy. So even though they tested positive, they're not having any symptoms from it. Now, this can lead to unnecessary dietary restrictions, and you may have then nutritional deficiencies. So we got to be careful. There's no definitive answer to this. But the overall protocol that seems to work extremely well is we take out the big foods, the ones that cause the most reaction, dairy, wheat, uh, seafood, nuts, peanuts, and then we start introducing them one at a time. Artificial sweetener really needs to be something that's never put in your body for numerous reasons. I don't care if you have reactions or not. You don't want to put that in your body. But when you start writing things down, you start to see where the problems come in, and then you have control. Chiropractically, we check the spine because the spine, the nerves control organs. So there's a nerve that controls your liver, your spleen, your thyroid, your kidneys, your earwax, your toenails. And so many times patients have come to us, and I've been doing this for a long time now, and they'll say, well, you know, doctors, I found that since I've been getting adjusted, my digestion is better, my blood sugar is better, my blood pressure is better, my mood is improved. So, we, you know, it's been said we don't know how far-reaching a thought, thought, deed, or action is going to be that we do today and how many millions of people it's going to affect in the future. And that's true for your health as well. If you're healthy, chances are you'll have healthier offspring, which will then have healthier offspring. And maybe one of those people is going to find the cure for, what's the proverbial, cancer, right? So you need to take care of yourself, not just for you, but for everyone around you. So get the nervous system working properly. If you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, that's another big cause. I'm going to cover that a little bit in, uh, later. i got to talk about how if you're not breaking down your proteins properly, you could be having a problem. So ma make sure you keep listening. We're going to cover that in a little bit. But if you do have acid reflux, we may need to massage or pull your stomach down away from your diaphragm. And then we got to get the spine working, the digestive system working, get the diet straightened out. And a lot of folks, once we start giving them the nutrients that their body needs to function normally, start to respond very well. And that's why I recommend, again, Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source. I also have Dr. Joe's Intestinal Cleanser. If your bowels aren't moving two to three times a day, yes, I said a day, you might want to consider Dr. Joe's Intestinal Cleanser as well. Now, the Super Greens, the Essential Source, I take them every day. I think you should too. They're on the website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Also on Amazon. If you have an Amazon account, you can get it there. Hey, give us a call. The lines are open for questions. 844-44-DR-JOE. 844-44-DR-JOE. We're going to be right back. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And hopefully we're going to give you a lot of good information. Really good show today because we're giving you a lot of things that you can do to take changes in your life. A lot of times we'll say, hey, don't do this, don't do this. But I'm giving you tests that you can do at home or little projects that you can do at home to see if you're having a reaction to certain foods. Because so many people are sick all the time, never realizing what's causing it. And a lot of times it's real obvious. You look at their diet and they eat what's called the SAD diet, the standard American diet. And they're eating things like alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, what I call the seven deadly sins of nutrition. And some basic things make dramatic changes in their lives. And I've seen a lot of people uh, say, well, you know, Dr. Joe, I, 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 something like simple. I took Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. I did nothing else in my life. I took Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're two supplements, if you don't know what they are. And, oh, my gosh, my energy started coming back, and my digestion got better. My love life improved, and my brain fog cleared up. And many times people are just so sick that any positive step makes them feel better. Now, the Super Greens, the essential source, I believe everyone should be taking. That's like the, the gold standard as far as I'm concerned when it comes to health care, uh, when it comes to supplements. And that alone gives people some amazing results. And then we'll do something simple like, I want you to cut out all your dairy products. And they'll say, well, oh, Dr. Joe, I can't cut out my dairy products. I love my ice cream, my cheese, my butter, my yogurt, my, my, uh, my uh, creams. And I'll say, well, just try it and see what happens. And after a couple of days, they'll come back and say, you know, you were right. I didn't realize how sick I was until I started getting better. And that's kind of cool. And then they'll say, well, I'm willing to do this because I saw the results. Everybody wants results, right? I mean, if you go to the gym and you work out for six months, you don't see any results, you're probably going to say, even six weeks, you're going to say, ah, you know what? This isn't working for me. 
But when you start changing your diet, you have to see positive results because you're giving the body the nutrients that it needs. And so we talked a little bit earlier about people having sensi food sensitivities and food allergy reactions. Now I'm gonna give you some specific things that you need to test if you wanna find out if you're having these reactions. One of them is real simple, and it's really one of my favorites. I want you to sit down real quietly before a meal, and I want you to take your pulse. You know, take your pulse. If you don't know how to do it, I'm sure if you go online, there's a thousand different videos out there to show you how to take your pulse. You can take it at your carotid artery. You can take it, you know, right below your thumb on the inside of your uh, wrist. And I want you to count for 60 seconds. Now, what you can do is you can shortcut, and you can count 20, how many beats in 20 seconds, multiply by three. But let's do this. Give me a whole minute of your life. Count your pulse while sitting and resting uh, for 60 seconds. Then eat something or expose yourself to something that you think you're having a reaction to. Perfume is a good one. But car cleaners, uh, carpet cleaners, new car smell, uh, deodorants, hairsprays, even toothpaste. Expose yourself to whatever you think you're having a reaction to. Wait about three minutes, maybe five minutes, and take your pulse again. And if it goes up five beats or more in that minute, you're probably having a reaction to that food. That's how quickly your body responds. Now, there's a technique I, my doctors do. It's called applied kinesiology, where we can, what's called muscle testing. And we can push on a muscle, any muscle in the body, and then we can uh, stimulate, pin, touch a pinch nerve or stimulate the body certain ways, or we can give you exposure to certain foods, and we can see if the muscles respond. And it really does happen that quick. And so we really want to get the foods that are causing these problems out of your life. Does it stink sometimes? Yeah, because a lot of times the foods you're addicted to are the ones that are causing the most problems. Like sugar, of course, is one nobody does well with eating sugar. So if I say, listen, you know, you know, Bob, you really need to cut out the sugar. Bob may go, yeah, I really like my breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, and pastas. I said, I know, I know you do. But what's more important, getting well or having a donut? For some people, it's the donut because the addiction is so bad. I talked to a dentist friend of mine a while ago. And his wife got hooked on opioids. I talked about this on my opioid show. And uh, then she started doing heroin. She was, became a street, uh, an addict. And she was out in the streets buying drugs. She couldn't break the addiction eventually. She died from it, sadly enough. So I can get you away from heroin. I can't get you away from food. So you have to really start taking some responsibility for that. But do that test and see what happens. I think you'll be amazed uh, as to how that works. Another thing that I find people have reactions to is they're not digesting their proteins properly. Now, your stomach's job is to take proteins and break them into something called amino acids. So your stomach takes proteins, dissolves the proteins into amino acids, and passes it into your small intestine. Well, what happens in your small intestine, if these proteins aren't broken down properly, you get these big chunks, relatively big chunks of protein that can be absorbed into your blood system. And when that occurs... The immune system spots this foreign protein, starts attacking it, and you can have reactions. So a lot of times when patients have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, uh, chronic cough, sinus problems, it's the acid in your stomach coming up into your esophagus and getting up into your throat and sinuses. So we, my doctors, will massage or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm, get the stomach to relax, and when it relaxes, it starts digesting uh, the proteins more efficiently. And countless patients have come to us over the years with acid reflux problems and allergic reactions. We fix their stomach, the protein's broken into amino acids properly, and the allergy goes away. Now, some people, as we get older, we may have to put them on digestive enzymes as well, because as we get older, our enzyme levels drop. It's called aging. And as your enzyme levels drop, you're just not breaking food down as well as you used to. And if the food isn't being broken down properly, you can have these reactions, and it actually exacerbates a lot of your health problems, your arthritis, the neck pain, the back pain, the chronic fatigue. So we try to get to the cause of the problem and not just you know jerk around and treat the symptoms. And many times the stomach is physically out of alignment. We need to pull it back down away from the diaphragm, and amazing things happen. So you see there's several things you want to look at. You want to look at staying away from the bad foods, doing a rotation diet, taking your pulse, fixing the stomach, I'm giving you action steps that I want you to start incorporating into your life because if you don't, you're going to have some problems. Sugar, of course, being one of the most addictive foods in the world, 
And that's the hard one to get away from because it's breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. So you just need to stop because there's no other way to do it. There's no way to wean yourself off. And if you want something sweet, you can use something like stevia. Uh, stevia would be a sweetener you can use. But before you have anything, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, and pastas, I want you to have a healthy meal like fruits, vegetables, nuts, or seeds. Folks, got to go to break. If you have a health care question, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-J-O-E. Uh, Dr. Joe Supergreens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, those are the supplements I believe everybody should be taking. And there's certain guidelines on my website that you want to follow, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Send me questions through the website as well. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, sign up for my newsletter on the website. A lot of sources of information. I'm trying to bombard you with any way you, we can to get you to get well and stay well. Folks, if you have a healthcare question, 844-44-DR-JOE, my website, drjoesposito.com. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Hey, thanks for being here, folks. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. We've got a good, good show today. Give me a lot of good things that you can do uh, to start doing your own self-diagnosis. And I'm not asking you to diagnose all your health care problems, but a lot of folks have health care issues and they don't know where it's coming from. So I'm giving you a lot of tools. And if you're just tuning in, uh, we're going to put this in thousands of hours of other shows on my website, drjoesposito.com. And you know what? We don't charge you for that. That's my gift to you. Also, we videotape my live lectures. If you've never been to a live lecture, I really recommend you come out and see them. They're a lot of fun. Uh, check my website if I'm in your area. And by the way, if you sign up for my newsletter, which is no charge, uh, we'll let you know when we're speaking and where we're speaking around the country. And if you follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, we send out a lot of good information uh, as well. And uh, we'll let you know when I'm speaking as well. Because the live lectures are just a blast because so much of healthcare is physical. And I need to show you what I'm talking about, not just uh, talk about it. Let's take some callers. Nick, how can we make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe. I hope you're doing well. Um, the question that I had um, is pretty general, but um, so in a, a wellness diet of, um, you know, not being vegetarian, I'm not vegetarian myself, but my question is, is animal protein necessary in a wellness diet? And can you get the same, um, I guess, nutrition as far as, you know, your, your protein needs with non-animal uh, foods? You know, Nick, that's the number one question I'm asked, actually. So I'm glad you asked that because I haven't covered that in a long time. So I'm really glad you called in with that. Uh, the answer is you do not need animal proteins at all in any way, shape, or form. And, in fact, there's a, studies done uh, all around the world. In fact, it was uh, National Geographic did a study a while ago to find out where the people had the longest lives uh, lived. And uh, there were three places. Let me see if I get it right. One was in Russia. Uh, one was in Okinawa, Japan. And one was in Loma Linda, California. So we started, they started thinking these are the people who have the longest lives, in, uh, gen generally speaking, on average. And what did they all have in common? Obviously, different geographics, uh, different religions, different lifestyles. But all of them ate essentially a plant-based diet. And so that was the one thing that kind of connected all of them. And you don't need animal protein because all animal protein is is recycled plant protein. Where do animals get their protein from? Well, they get it from eating plants, cows, uh, deer, if you're going to eat deer meat. Uh, they eat plants. Now, other animals may be fed other animals, too. But generally speaking, it, everything goes back down, down the food chain to the plant. So the plants are the source of all the proteins and the amino acids that, that are assembled to produce the proteins. So I haven't had any animal proteins. In fact, Christmas Day, 1986, is the last time I had any animal protein. So what's that, 33 years now? Wow, that is impressive. Yeah, and I've had no animal proteins, and I run circles around my 20-year-old uh, doctor sometimes. I've had doctors come in and follow me around a couple of times, and they'll look at me and go, how do you do what you do? This is insane. I couldn't do a fraction of what you do. So as I'm getting older, I have as much energy as I did when I was younger. My brain is as sharp as it's ever been. So I don't believe we need any animal proteins whatsoever. We can get all our proteins from plants. Now, if you do eat animal proteins, and I understand some people do, I recommend you do organic only. This way you can avoid the steroids, hormones, chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, genetically modified foods, and the other mess that goes with it. So if you're going to do animals, organic only. How's that for a deal? That sounds great. That sounds great. I really appreciate that. That's uh, very interesting to know you've gone that long without animal protein. That's uh, good for you. Yep. So far, so good. I'll give it another 50 or 80 years, and then I'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Thanks, Thanks for the so call, much. Nick. I appreciate it. All right, let's take another call. If you have a question, folks, the lines are open, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE, and that number rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. Trent, how can we make your day better? Hello? 
Hey, Trent. Oh, I had a question. My girlfriend and her mom are on like a, I think it's a low carb diet, and they drank a diet soda. But I heard that was worse for you than drinking regular soda. So I wasn't too sure about that. I agree 100%, Trent. Now, diet sodas, although they don't have sugar, have artificial sweeteners in them. Now, you can do a, a diet soda with sweetened with stevia. There's another sweetener called Lohan. Um, those would probably be okay. But if you're thinking about the traditional commercial diet sodas, uh, aspartame is one of the big sweeteners that they use. Now, aspartame is an excitotoxin to the brain. What that means, it causes the brain to fire faster than it's supposed to and can burn out your brain cells. And as a chiropractor, I'm very concerned about your brain and your nervous system. It breaks down to aspartic acid, phenylalanine, which can affect your kidneys, and methyl esters. Methyl esters converts into methanol. Methanol is wood alcohol. Wood alcohol attacks the nervous system, especially the optic nerve. So a lot of people who drink diet sodas start to notice that their vision fades and is failing, and a lot of that is due to the methanol. Now, methanol converts into formaldehyde, which is a Class A carcinogenic. Formaldehyde converts into fomic acid, which is antipoison. So the chemistry behind artificial sweeteners is just unbelievably dangerous to put in your body. So I would never recommend you do that. If they're using sucralose as a sweetener, sucralose stimulates your estrogen receptor sites and causes you to act as if you have too much estrogen, which can actually cause you to gain weight. So there's tons of studies out there showing that the artificial sweeteners don't help you lose weight. They actually help you gain weight. So if they're on a low-carb diet, I certainly support that. But I would say if you're going to do a soda, have it sweetened with stevia then. Problem solved? Uh, that helps out a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you have any questions, I'm going to put this show on my website, Trent, and they could listen to it. It's going to be drjoesposito.com. It'll be in my archives. Okay? All right. Thank you. Thanks, Trent. I appreciate it. If you have a question, 844 doctor Joe. But that's a good question. I haven't talked about artificial sweeteners in a while. I've kind of got to go back to my basics here. I would not recommend that. Now, also with sodas, many times uh, they'll, use an, they'll use acids in there to uh, make the sodas brown, like, for example, cola sodas. Uh, and the acids that they add to the soda when they get into the body have to be neutralized. And the body uses calcium as its primary neutralizing agent. So when you put acid in your body, your body has to utilize stored calcium out of the bones to neutralize the acids. So people will come to me and say, well, Dr. Joe, I have osteoporosis or osteopenia. That's a big one right now. And it's pre-osteoporosis kind of. And I'll look at their diet and never, in all the years I've been in practice, i got to figure, 33, 34 years now, I've never known anyone who was on a plant-based diet to ever have osteopenia or osteoporosis. And tr usually when somebody comes in with that, they've eaten a, a very high-acid diet, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. And what's cool is this. A lot of patients will listen to what I say. Some don't, but most do. And when they do, we can have them tested again in six months, eight months, 10 months. And they come back and they say, Doc, my scores have improved. I'm getting better. And that's so exciting. And doctors, the medical profession, is now starting to realize that some of the things that they thought could never get better are starting to. I have macular degeneration. And by taking Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, I have the pictures to prove it. My eyes are about 60 to 80% better than they were before I started taking it. So Super Greens and Essential Source really is the core supplements I believe everybody should be taking. And if you want information on that, that's on my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world, also available on Amazon if you have an Amazon account. But folks, do it for a month. See what happens. If you don't like it, you spent a few bucks. If you do like it, which you probably will, I want you to take it forever. Hey, give us a call. A number here at the station, 844-44-DR-JOE. We'll be right back. For Dr. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. And we're talking today about uh, certain foods that can cause uh, your, your, a lot of your health care problems because you're having food sensitivities or food allergies or reactions to them, and you never thought about it. And that's a, that. we've got some great callers calling in today at 844 dr Joe. So I want to go to these callers right away because uh, I don't want to leave them hanging, but we're going to get to some more information if, if we run out of callers here. Is it uh, Kelsey? Keasley. Keasley. How can we make your day better? Yeah. How you doing, Mr. Joe? Doing great. Um, I remember some time ago uh, being in elementary school and they, they stressed a lot about the four basic food groups. And, and I remember the teachers. I'm 41 years old, so some time ago. I remember the teachers uh, stressing so much about milk and the campaigns of how milk does the body good. Sure. Is that still the case? Because you don't see those commercials so much anymore. And I'm wondering if uh, 
actually heard milk was not good for you. So well, it's, it's, elaborate a little bit on yeah, that. It's never been the case. As, as, in my opinion, it's never been the case because uh, you can advertise anything, really, and say, hey, this is great, and you can either buy into it or not. That's what advertising is. wants you to buy the product. But dairy products, I have a whole chapter of this in my new book called Prescription for Extreme Health and why dairy is what I call one of the seven deadly sins of nutrition. is alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Dairy has a protein in it called casein. And uh-huh. we don't have the enzyme called renin to break down the casein properly. So this big chunk of protein, casein, can get into your body. And if it gets into the blood system, a lot of people have reactions to it. In fact, milk is the number one food allergen that there is. Mm. So a lot of people are having mucus problems. They're having ADD, ADHD, digestive problems, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation. It's not a good food, in my opinion. Also, many of the cows, if it's commercial milk, are fed uh, genetically modified corn and soy. Now, cows are not designed to eat corn and soy. They're designed to eat grass and hay and things like this. And so if you're 41 years old, you may remember when milk used to have flavor to it. That's right. Milk used to separate. Remember the cream and the milk would separate Mm -hmm. back in the old days? That's exactly right. And now the cows are fed what's called a homogenous diet. They're fed the same thing over and over again. And they pasteurize the milk, which kills off viruses, germs, and bacteria. But in the process, when they heat it, a lot of the calcium binds to the casein. Just like you heat an egg, the proteins coagulate. That's what happens to the proteins in milk. So unless you have – go ahead. I'm sorry. Even if it's the horizon organic stuff. Well, the organic, I mean, is, if you're going to do milk, it's got to be organic. But uh, I know in Georgia, the law is it has to be pasteurized by law. Uh, you can't do uh, raw milk unless you buy it for your pets. For some reason, your pets can't you. do raw milk. Um, but one, if you're going to do dairy products, any type of dairy products, I recommend you do organic only. Okay. However, I haven't had any dairy products in about 32 years, 33 years. I'm fine. There's yeah, rice. I don't have to have it. It's yeah. just a question I saw because you, you get into debates now whether milk is uh, yeah. does it actually really do your body good. Well, I've never lost yeah. that debate ever, uh, <laughs> so that, that okay. don't, don't, don't want to battle me on that one. And also, there's a lot of studies out, like the the nurses' study. It, it's uh, it's out of a uh, I think it's out of Harvard. Um, it says that uh, the more dairy products you consume, the higher the rate of osteoporosis. Uh, because dairy products have two uh, proteins and amino acids in it called methionine and cysteine. And methionine and cysteine are acids that have to be neutralized because otherwise they Ah, can get you sick or kill you. So the body uses calcium to neutralize the acids. So the higher your dairy consumption, the higher the rate of osteoporosis. So wait a minute. I thought we drank dairy for preventing osteoporosis. Well, that's not true. That's what they told you. It's not true. Yeah, and then it also has lactose in it, and you need an enzyme called lactase to break down the lactose, and we don't produce lactase as humans, so that's why a lot of people have allergic reactions to the sugar, the lactose, causing a lot of gas and the bloating. So um, I would strongly advise you don't do dairy, and if you do, it's got to be organic. How's that for a deal? That's a deal. All right, man. Appreciate the call. Thanks so much. If you have a question, folks, 844-44-DR-JOE. Sandy, how can we make your day better? Hi, Dr. Joe. Thanks for taking my call. You are welcome. Um, if one is to go on a plant-based diet, what do they eat to feel full? Because I could eat a salad all day long, but I'm never going to feel satisfied. I understand. And white rice, to me, <laughs> is like empty calories. Sure, it's sugar. Um, I agree with you 100% what you're saying, and that's why I wrote my first book called uh, Eating Right for the Health of It. And we talk about that extensively. We talk about it in my second book, too. But let's answer your question. Uh, there's a difference between a vegetarian diet, a vegan diet, and a plant-based diet. Okay, so let, okay. let's cover that first. Vegetarian, okay. there's different versions of it. You can be a lacto ovo vegetarian, meaning you eat dairy and eggs. Um, there's a, a pesco vegetarian, meaning you eat fish. Um, but vegetarian means you don't eat meat, but you might eat eggs or dairy products. Vegan, no animal products. But you okay. can be eating uh, brownies all day that don't have dairy products in them. Doesn't mean it's a healthy diet. A vegan diet is good, but it doesn't mean it's the best. A plant-based diet is where you're eating mostly fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. So that's where I'd like for you to be. Now, how do you feel full by eating salads all day? Well, salad doesn't fill me up either. But you can add things to the salad. You could add nutritional yeast to it, which is a great source of protein and B vitamins, including B12, because as a vegan or a plant-based diet, we, I do take a, a B12 uh, supplement. I add B12 to Dr. Joe's essential source as well. 
it's part of the, the when I make the supplements, I add that as well. Um, so how do you feel full? You can add nuts to your salad. You can add uh, beans to your salad. You cannot eat salads. You can do beans. You can do um, if you can do rice, brown rice. I don't do a lot of grains anyway, so don't worry about that. Um, but essentially, a day in my life, I have Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source first thing in the morning. And when you're hungry, many times you're not hungry for food. You're hungry for nutrition. Correct. And once you start giving your body a lot of nutrition, and this is something people report all the time, they say, Doc, I'm eating so much less food by taking the Super Greens, the Essential Source, that I'm saving money. Because it cost me, whatever, $2, $2.50 a day for the Super Greens and the Essential Source, but I'm saving way more than that because I'm not eating as much. So right. I start my day out with that. Sometimes I'll have a couple of handfuls of nuts, you know, almonds, walnuts, pecans, pistachios. Lunch usually is my salad. I usually have one salad a day, and I'll try to do a salad somewhere in there, and I'll add nuts or seeds or chickpeas or black beans to it and just to give it make you feel fuller. And then for dinner, kind of varies depending on what I'm doing. But you'll find that when you go to a plant-based diet and start giving your body all those nutrients, it may take a few weeks. Those hunger pangs start to go away pretty quickly. Mm. Okay. Okay, so give it a shot. I think you'll be pretty happy going to a okay. plant-based diet. And I don't know anyone who's never been happy. And, and studies have shown you could add about eight years, eight quality years to your life between eight and 11 years just by going to a plant-based diet. So that alone is a good reason. Mm. And you save money. Yes, I understand that part. <laughs> okay. Any other questions, Sandy? Not tonight, but thank, thank you so much. Appreciate, appreciate it. Call. Thanks so much. You guys are awesome. I just love my callers. I just every every day. And what's nice too is it's not just when the show is on. If you have questions, you can always send them to me through my website, drjoesposito.com, and I'll answer them for you. Now, I don't you can send me questions through Facebook, but I'd rather you send them through my website because I I just I don't know. I just maybe I'm, I'm old fashioned. I like my website. But follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, sign up for my newsletter. That's on the website, first page, drjoesposito.com. And we send out lots of good information. Not a lot, but enough to, you know, kind of whet your appetite. And also let you know when I do live lectures as well. If you want to get the Super Greens, the essential source, I think you should. Uh, those are on my website, drjoesposito.com. Hey, don't be like so many patients. Every day, patients come into my office, and my doctors always ask me this. They say, patients come in every day, and they say, I've been listening to you, Dr. Joe, for two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. And I've been meaning to come see you, or I've been meaning to start taking your supplements, and now I am. Don't wait any longer, folks. Start today. I promise you, you won't be, you won't be upset with that decision. Hey, got to go to a break. The number here is 844-44-DR-JOE. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Hey, folks, thanks for being here. Do appreciate you taking time out of your day. Good show today. A lot of good callers, too, by the way. I'm going to take another call in just a second. Um, but I do appreciate your calls. If I don't get you on the air, you can always send me questions through my website, drjoesposito.com. More than happy to help you in any way I possibly can. And I like to work with the other doctors. Sometimes patients come to us and say, well, I'm seeing this one doctor. And I like to co-manage the case. Because sometimes those doctors have insights that I may not have. They may have done blood work already. They may have done MRIs, CAT scans. And I like to co-manage the cases. And most doctors, I find, major, major majority, every now and then you get a, you know somebody who's not too cool. Um, they don't want to give up their patient. But it's not giving up the patient. It's working to co-manage the case so that we can get the best results for the patient. And, in fact, some of the best referral patients I've ever had are patients that I said, listen, I need to refer you to another doctor because this is kind of out of my ballpark. I need this is something that's in their ballpark. And then maybe we can work together in the future. And those patients really appreciate that. So that's why I like to work closely with other doctors because our goal, my team of doctors, their goal and our goal is to get you well and keep you well. Chris, how can we make your day better? Hey, how you doing? Today? Doing very well, Chris. I was um, diagnosed from a doctor with H. pylori back, stomach bacteria. Yes. And um, I did go on two different antibiotics at the same time. Sure. And they told me I had to wait, like, about three or four months, and they would do another test because it doesn't always clear it up. Right. You have to do it again. Right. Um, but I was feeling better, and I never went on the second round, but I started getting the symptoms coming back, you know, the stomach ulcers and stuff. Yeah. And I was wondering if there was a natural cleanse, like a juice cleanse or something, that I could take instead of that antibiotic. Well, this was a revolutionary finding several years ago when a doctor came forward and said that ulcers were caused by bacteria in your stomach. And this was, it shook the medical world. This has never been heard. What do you mean? A bacteria in your stomach? It doesn't make sense. And when they did more research and they found out, yes, H. pylori is a bacteria that can eat away at your stomach and cause ulcers. And what we're finding now is that the H. pylori, we all have it. It's theorized we all have it. 
But the reason it doesn't set up shop, so to speak, is because our stomach acid is high enough, and the acid keeps the bacteria in check. And people with the H. pylori infections many times have low stomach acid. So one of the techniques, and I'm not saying don't listen to your doctors, keep doing what your doctors are saying, but if you were my patient, I would suggest that maybe you want to try to increase your stomach acid. And this is benign. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. A couple of things you can try. Number one is you can try uh, apple cider vinegar, raw organic apple cider vinegar. Try about a tablespoon or two at least once a day. See how you do for once a day, and then you can go to twice a day. And that can help stimulate your digestive enzymes. If that's not enough, you'll know pretty soon if it works or not, in maybe four, five, six days. You might want to consider taking some supplements. And there are supplements we can give you that can stimulate your gastric enzymes. And also, we may want to consider giving you digestive enzymes to help break down the proteins and increase your stomach acid. So that's the, the view that a lot of holistic doctors are taking now is increase the stomach acid to kill off the bacteria so that the ulcer then can heal. Right. Well, in the mornings, I found that I was having a lot of stomach acid in the mornings, and I was nauseous and throwing up almost daily every morning. Okay. Um, I did switch to RO water, and that did help alkaline my stomach. And I don't know. I've had a little bit of success with that, but I, it's not 100% Yeah, it's not getting better. Well, you know? A lot of what you might have been throwing up may not have been stomach acid. It might have been lactic acid because the food you ate the night before, okay. if it wasn't being broken down fast enough, sat in your stomach and it right. rotted. And when food rots, it gives right. off lactic acid. So I that, wasn't— uh, Go ahead. It, it was so bad I couldn't even eat like a full meal. I could eat sure. like a quarter of my meal, yeah. you know. Now you might and sometimes I would go throw it up immediately. Now you might have a hiatal hernia then. That sounds more like a hiatal hernia. Um, and if you go to my website, drjoesposito.com, under blog, you'll see Dr. Joe's articles. I think it's like the fifth or sixth article down. I have an article on GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, which sounds like what you have. And we talk about the techniques we use to gently massage or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. I have acid reflux. And when mine acts up, my heart races. Um, I, I, my heart beats fast, and then it stops, and then it's all – I, I get a regular heartbeat. And I know right away I grab one of my doctors. I say, hey, pull my stomach down. They pull my stomach down within minutes. My stomach flattens out, and I feel good. So you might want to consider that as part of this whole complex that you have as well. You may want to get that fixed too. Okay. Okay, so try that. See if you can increase stomach acid. Read that article, and if it makes sense to you, you can come see us. We'll see if we can get that fixed for you. Perfect. I appreciate that. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate the call. And, you know, the number one reason we see patients in our office is pain. Now, of course, we're chiropractors, so neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, car accidents. I have never seen a car accident where the car was damaged where the occupants weren't, ever, in all my years of practice. And many times patients will come in and say, well, you know, uh, the insurance company said there wasn't a lot of damage to my car, so I wasn't hurt. Now, if I took a baseball bat and I hit your car with it, it might cause a little dent somewhere, but it's not going to cause you know thousands of dollars worth of damage. If I took that baseball bat and hit you with it, I'd cause some damage. So what happens is force is mass times acceleration. So how big the car is times how fast it's going, 5 miles, 10 miles an hour, determines how much force is impacting your car. And if you have a seatbelt on, your shoulder, your hips, those are all locked in. What's not locked in? Your head. And so your head is going to bounce around and snap back and forth, many times stretching and tearing the muscles and ligaments in the neck. And so even a small impact can cause some real serious damage. Now, the insurance company's job, I understand it, their job is to save money and not pay out claims. You know, not pay out claims if, if they can s avoid it. I'm not saying they don't pay out claims ever. But their job is to save money. My job is get you well. So if you've ever been in a car accident, whether it was yesterday or 50 years ago, if you weren't treated and got those bones realigned, chances are you have some permanent damage. And if it happened right away, the quicker we get to it, usually the faster we can work with it and get it to heal. Can we guarantee results? Can never guarantee results. But as chiropractors, and we want to get the, the spine lined up, nutritionally, I want to make sure you're getting at least the raw materials to get the body to heal. Your body can't heal if it doesn't have the raw materials coming in. That's why I recommend at least Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Minimum. Minimum amount of nutrients I think you should be taking. 
because those are the core nutrients. That's the basic ones that you need to get the body working. Then we add a good diet. And I usually do a nutritional workup on all my patients because I want to make sure the patients get everything they need. And then we do the chiropractic work. We realign the bones in the body. We pull the stomach away from the diaphragm. And now you have a health care plan. And then we talk about if you are having reactions to foods, allergic reactions or sensitivities, we show you how you can test for it yourself to see if there's a problem. We can co-manage it with your other doctors because our goal is get you well and keep you well. So, folks, if you want to order Super Greens, Essential Source, Intestinal Cleanser, my books, those are on my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. If you have questions, send them to me through the website, drjoesposito.com. Hey, got to run. Thanks for, thanks for listening. Tell your friends about the show. We'll catch you next time.